We finally reached the last episode of the first season of Invincible. Lots of questions that need to be answered. It's raining blood. <laughs> okay. Great start. This is going to be intense. Insane. There's no way Mark Sarge them, though. There's no way. Yeah, yeah, that just happened. Again. Oh! Oh my god, that happened a lot quicker than I thought it would. Controlling you. Yeah, everyone thinks that. <laughs> that was my feeling as well. Let my dad go! That's so sweet and sad at the same time. But he has no shot. No shot at all. It's just me. This is why you don't plan speeches. It's a waste of time. It never goes the way you think it will. I am from Viltrum, but it's not the planet I've told you about. Okay, not so surprising. In order for our people to reach their full potential, <laughs> we had to remove the weak right. from our society. Look at all these people reaching their potentials. Our population was cut in half, but what emerged from the ashes okay, was unstoppable. We decided to make it the only empire in our galaxy. So they're conquerors. This is interesting. It's the combination of so many different things from other things. It's simultaneously like Superman, the Saiyans, Fire Lord Ozai. It's also way, way, way deep into that ends justify the means type thing. Who gets to decide is my question. You know what we need right now? <laughs> I'm not going to say it. Earl and Smith <laughs> single-handedly, with the help of a few scouts, took out the, the most prominent out there. It's been a while. I'm rusty. What would Erwin do, I wonder? So maybe he'll explain more, but I feel like there's already a problem with this. Like, you know a plan is not that well conceived when you don't even have to get to the horrendous moral dilemmas. It just doesn't seem like it would it would solve anything, because what that just becomes is an arms race. Now you still have the same crappy people, same crappy society, but just stronger, but they're all sort of like at the same level still. That's one of the essential elements of evolution already, where things move forward, but they also remain in place. You know, like if one dominant trait ends up winning, the successors all sort of have that trait and so then competitively everyone's back at, a, at an even playing field so things have moved but also haven't moved. I don't really see how this solves the problems of any society but I do see the atrocity of it. That I think is way more clear than the benefit. There's another element of it though right which is the enjoyment. Maybe I'm reading too much into it but it feels to me like whatever he says about it there's some part of him that's like thrilled by this. So which came first? You know I feel like there's always a lot of different things mixed into these kinds of decisions. It's not just adherence to a certain plan that they think will do good. There's always an emotional component and the question is like, what's what? We decided to make it the only empire in our galaxy. Once I was old enough, we're I helping. joined we're the helping. War. It was hard, but I believe Shut up and accept this cause. help, aliens. Some species resisted, of course, but no one could withstand us for long. Look at all these people we've saved. That is true. They do have an advantage relative to other, other planets and species. I couldn't tell your mother <laughs> oh, <no. here. laughs> Imagine. But that time's come to an end. He could still choose differently, couldn't he? I mean, hard to redeem him at this point, but... Poor Mark. Poor sweet Mark. Mark. this is good news. <laughs> he's a lot of touch, obviously. You lied to me. Among other not terrible things until he's you done. had your powers. Not until I was sure. Oh. Sure of what? Oh. Sure you were a Viltrumite. Because so otherwise, I yeah. I'd just be one more human to conquer? Omni Man is the epitome of foot and mouth. The older we get, the slower we age. Viltrumite what? DNA is so pure, you're nearly full blooded. You'll live for thousands of years. Whoa. Everyone you know and love will be gone before you even look 30. Wow. We can stop wars, eliminate hunger, give the medical technology centuries ahead of what they have now. I do love your mother, but she's more like a a pet to me. A pet? Oh this my is god! The only way. Foot in mouth, foot in mouth. He's almost perfect. If he would just learn to just shut the hell up. <laughs> He, like, would get everything. He, he just win. Has anyone done any math on this? I feel like you could probably calculate the costs and benefits in terms of lives. Because if you're wiping out half the planet, how long would it take to save the equivalent number of lives given their new technology, etc.? Is that a weird question? Or maybe you could calculate it in terms of numbers of years of life that are added on net to the world with his plan killing half of the population and medical technology versus what it is right now. My gut instinct, having not really thought this through at all, it would take a very very long time to equalize that just in terms of like the raw objective number of lives saved. You know what I'm saying? Am I crazy in thinking that it wouldn't even be comparable? It wouldn't even be close? And again, that's not even getting to the question of like who gets to decide? Who gets to decide which lives are worthwhile? Another great YouTube video idea that I'll never do. What do you think is gonna happen? 
Then I'm gonna go enslave my friends for a bunch of aliens I've never met? There you go, Mark. Keep doing you. I don't give a shit about Viltrum. Yeah, I don't yeah. care if I live a fucking million years. This is my <laughs> home, and I won't let you destroy it. Damn, he's like a real hero. I know exactly what I'm saying. This takes huge guts because, like, he has no shot. No shot. But he has help. That's gotta be it. Oh, this hurts, though. At least he forgot about Amber for a few minutes. But the good news is he has other things at his disposal to help him. He's got the Justice League, he's got Eve, and he's got the entire U.S. federal budget at his disposal. It's pretty great. Don't you just hate it when you gotta kill your son to fulfill your duties to your, your alien planet? Relatable. They're going to kill each other, Cecil. You have to stop this. Each other? <laughs> right. Eve! Oh, Jesus Christ, you're okay. I'm fine. This really puts things into perspective, doesn't it? I truly hope Mark lives up to his name. To face his father and survive, he'll need to be invincible. Oh, I called it this time, finally. Oh man, it's really bloody. <laughs> Come on, Mark, get a hit in at least. It's not too late. Yes, it is. And you can't even really appeal to his emotions. Appeal to his ego, maybe? That might work. Tell him how great he could be if he just was Earth's actual hero. There you go. That's <laughs> such a cool shot. <laughs> direct hit. Repeat direct hit on Omni Man. Yeah, but come on. Come on, Cecil. You know better than that. This plane is weak. Omni Man is like the, the Gordon Ramsay of alien conquerors. Your planet. It's dry. <laughs> yeah, it's a big contrast, right? It's like this one life that's really important to Mark in front of all these, you know. In light of all this things oh, that I can't even man. speak right. <laughs> Too excited. <laughs> in light of everything that's happening, and Omni Man's total disregard for everyone, including his own wife and kid, Mark cares enough to save this one one fighter pilot. And it just feels so much better. I don't know, you just can't fake that kind of thing. He's real. Didn't think I was gonna make it. Oh no. You almost killed him! Instead, you saved him. So much effort. For what? I was so unnecessary though. They really put a lot into this episode. It's amazing. It's, it's terrible because Omni-Man is so, so awful, but it's just so cool watching him do stuff. Did seeing that man lose his life disturb you? Did it hurt? Well, let's see how you handle this. <laughs> I don't think those are equivalent, but okay. You do you, Omni-Man. <laughs> I'm sure they're fine. They're fine too. Very fine. <laughs> Damn, it sucks he just used Mark as like a weapon. Yeah. That sucked. Ugh. How could you do this? That was your fault. Oh my god. And what were they doing with those fragile little lives anyway? Listen to what I'm saying. You know in your heart I'm right. No, none of this rings true at all. Is mom's life worthless? In the grand scheme of things, yes. <gasps> She's not even a pet. My pet's lives are valuable. Liar! No, he's not. He's not lying. This is like the most truthful he's ever been. This is real Omni Man. I even overestimated like his love for his family. Maybe this time you'll learn. That's gonna kill all these people too. That happens. <gasps> no! That was one of the most awful things I've ever, ever seen, and it continues. Just gonna stop it there for a minute. <laughs> Di digest that. That was rough for me. Morning commutes, am I right? <laughs> they could be a real pain. It's funny that this show filled the Attack on Titan slot. It's not a total coincidence, just because this came up a lot as recommendations following that show. But interestingly, there's some thematic overlap. You know, this idea of, isn't life so terrible? You know, isn't the way things are so awful? Wouldn't it be great if we just fixed this by doing all the bad things? And at first glance, I think it's one of those things that just seems obviously villainous, obviously terrible. Especially in the Omni-Man incarnation, just because he's such a terrible person. And he doesn't seem to suffer for it at all, which I think is important in terms of how closely we relate to it. But actually, I think it's just an extreme form of a somewhat common thought or a somewhat common way of thinking, or maybe a certain lack of understanding. Because I think the most horrendous things are not always from a place of malice. A lot of the time, terrible things happen because of well-meaning people who think they have 
isolated a root problem and don't understand. I mean, there's a lot of things it misses. One is it's an underestimation of other people and their capacity. It's an overestimation of one's ability to judge and also to meddle even with a complex system. It assumes a knowledge of outcomes, which in my opinion is nearly impossible in any system of sufficient complexity, especially when you factor in time. It's a lack of sympathy or empathy or whatever, which admittedly is very difficult because it's nearly impossible for us to give the same reality to others that we experience in ourselves and our close loved ones. And the fact that we ourselves cannot sufficiently evaluate or feel the emotions of others, which somehow gives it less weight despite the reality of it. And also by seeing other people's lives as expendable, by doing what Omni-Man just did, he is creating the evilness that he's hoping to avoid. When looking at the tragedy of this event, just take Mark only, you know, the character that we know. This is forever going to be trauma for him, let alone the entire city, it seems, of people who whose lives are just wiped out. It's really easy to let other people bear the costs of your decisions while you, you experience none of them. It takes no mental effort at all to be okay with that. But that is a very direct source of evil. It is other people not caring for us sufficiently that leads to negative events in our own lives. But you see this, you know, you see this in real life. You see people wishing hard harm to befall others who don't do what they would like them to do. You know, people who don't conform to their visions of what society should be are expendable, are targets of hatred. I don't know, this kind of thing boils my potato. That's not a not an expression, but it's a lot. It's a lot to take in. <laughs> These people are meaningless. It's so easy to say that. <laughs> Did you just bounce from that hit? And now we go to space. It's beautiful. You aren't listening, Mark. <laughs> you don't know me. I will burn this planet down. I feel like we did spend know, another we know. minute living it's among to this these extent. animals. It's just ab absolute disgust for humanity. He's not even well-meaning. That's even giving him too much credit. He like talks about humanity as if they're pests. This, this whole thing, this whole episode so far is amazing in terms of the action and the animation. You're a Viltrumite in blood only. Well, your true education begins oh, no. now. Okay. It's a great TV day though, am I right? But we can't save lives. Cecil's yeah, yeah. orders were to stay here. We Come on, Rudy. Care. Rudy's got a lot of power too. He's got the drones. You're not a robot anymore, remember? So I don't really care about humanity that much, but I do like Monster Girl. <laughs> Priorities. I get it. <laughs> no, it's so pitiful. I love it though. He's got heart. That's our Mark. It's amazing how much Mark has grown on me in just eight episodes. I didn't think of much of him at first, but he's a good kid. Good guy. For a second, I thought he was going to throw Mark around the world like he did with that baseball. Would have been pretty epic. I'll stop you. I'm ready when you are. Oh no. It's sad. What 17 more years? I can always start again. Make another kid. Stop. Stop it. A flashback? This is a waste of everyone's time. There's so much more I could be doing right now. Mm. Oh. Oof. It's just so much at once. This is a real thing too. I mean, I understand that feeling actually. This feeling of like, why are people wasting this time or their lives with such frivolity? Though the sad reality of it is it's not the baseball player's lack of understanding. It's Omni-Man's lack of understanding, as is often the case. And I think actually it's the awareness of that on some level that causes the anger. Having a dislike for something, you know, preferring not to do something is one thing. Having a strong negative emotion about something, like hating something or being disgusted by something, in my opinion, almost always masks some kind of insecurity or fear about that thing, or a fear that one's own mental framework of the world is not the complete or best mental framework of the world, and maybe a feeling of deficiency in certain areas. Like, baseball actually is probably great for these kids, it's just Omni Man can't understand that. He's the foolish one in this situation, and often it's the most foolish people who make the strongest judgments, because if you really understood, you, you would be able to grasp the depth of something. You know, it's easy to hate on something. Anybody can do that. The challenge is finding the, the utility in connecting with something. So it's possible that on some level, Omni Man's disgust for humanity comes from 
from an insecurity about himself. And I think that parallels some of the other stuff we've seen in the show where he's this big, strong, powerful man, right? But he can't get everything he wants. Things don't go his way. And he's infuriated by that fact because this is his value system. I am all these wonderful things. I am Mr. Perfect everything, except people don't like him. How can that be the case? You know, how could it be that I'm so perfect yet everything's falling apart? And living on Earth, he's probably reminded constantly, even if it's on a subconscious level, of his weaknesses his deficiencies. So in many ways, he's the weak one. And I think it's that blindness that, that is the leading force behind that arrogance that he exudes all the time. You know, it's it's he who's missing things. It's the arrogant person who's who's weaker, not the person who can like enjoy baseball. You know what I mean? See that look on his face? How can you see that and not feel the same way? Right. Right. Debbie's got it. Good job, kid Mark. Shows us what life is all about. This is humanity. This is Omni-Man's flashback, don't know. Is this some tiny molecule of light in the darkness? Come on, buddy, you can do can it! Can Omni-Man be saved? Safe. I don't know, he's pretty far gone. Right, his understanding helped him to enjoy it. See, that's like, I don't know, that feels so much stronger and more intelligent to me. Damn it! Damn these baseball flashbacks. <laughs> could have had that a little earlier, though. I mean, you could just stop it. You could stop now. It would be tough to live after this, but don't make it worse. Why did you Stop. make me do Stop. this? Oh, shut the hell up. <laughs> you live to see this world crumble to dust and blow away. That long? Everything you know will be gone. What will you have after 500 years? Dignity. You, God? I still have you. Oh. Oh. That was actually kind of perfect. Look at it. Look at your hands. You've got lots of literal blood on your hands. And a lot of other places. Let them out. Let the emotions out. You can't run from this one. Were those two solitary space tears? Debbie kind of saved, saved the world there. A long time ago. The damage. See, behind me was done in a matter of Yeah, that hurts. Minutes. Everybody who's ever involved with Omni-Man. And we're all asking the same behind there. question. How could someone who life? promised to keep us safe, to protect us against any threat, become that threat? We can be thankful that the danger is behind us. Yeah, for now. Omni-Man's coming back, or someone from Biltrum is. They got a whole planet of these people. I don't even know where Mark goes from here. I mean, that was a real test. He proved his his heart. It's all over. No, it's not. Why do you lie, Debbie? Is there wine in there? Here, There's wine in there. Oh, okay. Drink. Oh, I'm so proud of you. Yeah, we all are. Yeah, I feel like he's gonna be more damaged emotionally than physically from all this. There's that reminder. Yeah, here's something good that came out of all this. Actual team unity. We haven't earned it yet. Seriously? Or not. No, but it will be. It will be. Perspective has totally Locked changed. Off. No! I said the perspective has changed. Now we look like a team. Perspective has changed. <laughs> that was a weird gambit there, but okay. They really uh, did all the colors this episode. This episode was the color budget. So I talked about it, parallels on Attack on Titan earlier. There are also parallels to My Hero Academia with this whole like, you know, relying on a symbol thing and the limitations of that. It's so tricky because if you sort of abdicate power or responsibility outwards to some kind of like force, you're sort of at the mercy of whoever is at the helm of that thing. And so in My Hero Academia, people are so fixated on the symbol of All Might and trust him to like save the world all the time. And that image is cultivated really strongly. And so people get used to thinking in that way. But then of course the villains are able to do that same thing and to gather support through a similar kind of symbolism. And here people deeply trusted Omni-Man, but were therefore sort of at the mercy of him. Although, you know, in this case, they would be at his mercy either way. But I also see this kind of thinking in matters of government as well, where like people think that the person that they vote for is either the savior of the world or the person who's going to bring calamity upon the world with very little in between. And to me, it's sort of like, well, if that risk exists, you know, if like if it's possible that someone who comes into power could be the calamity of the world, isn't there already a problem? You know what I mean? Isn't that the problem, not the person? 
isn't it in some way a risk to abdicate that kind of responsibility and power to others? Because then you're just counting on other people being the good people that you hope they are. But as we all know, it's very rare to find people who are actually great, actually pure, despite the imagery that they might put forth. It's sort of, sort of a gamble. And that binary greatest person ever, worst person ever dichotomy is sort of not the point. This is the saddest Justice League training montage I've ever seen. It's sort of a great touch having like the the humanity element of it be showcased after that whole thing with Omni Man. Everything he said about us. <laughs> yeah, it's human propaganda, <laughs> but I like it. Aren't you gonna tell me what happened? That depends. On what? On if you still want to be a hero or not. There's no going back. What else are you gonna do? Go to college? She heard everything. How could you do Especially that? Especially the pet part. Think she deserves to know the truth. Yeah, yeah but your does. mother knew he killed the guardians. But she was holding out hope there was a good reason for it. So was I. I think a lot of us were, yeah. I was too. He didn't change trajectory, so he's going somewhere pretty damn far away. Which means we, um, we need a replacement. No. Not now. Not yet. Yeah. I mean, give him some time, but he'll do it. I shouldn't have brought this up so soon. Let's yeah, the timing is the thing, first. I think. But, like, I mean, it's clear. Based on his actions already. He didn't even think. What he did goes deep. <sighs> Much better. I'm going to go lie down. I was walking for a tiring for you, Mark. <laughs> okay, mom. Yep, Debbie's mental health also a concern. But there was something, something in there with oh, Omni-Man, though. That's great, son. Just great. He's terrible. If you right. really want to do something, there you have to be prepared for anything. Yeah, all those, all these things had a double meaning. This is the beginning of a long journey for you and me. Double meaning. <laughs> Along the way, you're gonna need to do things you don't want to do. Double meaning. Or might not think you can do. Yep. We have responsibilities. Right. Responsibility of this train. I want to, I want to be, be just, just like, like you. You will be, son. It'll be better. Will. Once he processes. Mom, I'm gonna order something for dinner. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Is that be okay? Oh no. Oh, okay, she's just crying. That's okay. <laughs> she can cry. What does Mark turn to for support right now? Mark! Not Amber. <laughs> Detective Amber, ready to help out on any tough cases that come up. Can we solve the case of why you were such a terrible girlfriend? You guys want to, uh... Let's go out. Yeah, he needs this. Speaking of hitting the sauce. <laughs> we're not open. How did you get it? Debbie. He does like her, doesn't he? Uh, am I crazy about that? I didn't think about what would happen afterwards. After everything Nolan said and did, I still can't believe it. I can't believe our time together was a lie. Yeah, and I feel like for Debbie, it's extra bad because my gut feeling is like she knew on some level. Like there were a bunch of scenes where she she was watching Omni Man's behavior and detesting it, but was like, it's okay, everything's fine. Everything's great. My husband's a good person. I wish he'd come back. Me too. It must be very confusing to feel that way, but I get it. I just need to get out of the house, but uh, can we talk about something else? Yeah, yeah. We can try, Normalcy, yeah, but it's help. literally all anyone is That's talking true. about in the whole world. <laughs> I guess this world. is the new normal. Someone's flying towards Earth from deep space. We're still trying to figure out who it is, but... He's going to answer the call. I'm... Um, well, I'm she knows. Adam Eve. She made that what? comment about saving oh the world. God. She didn't know? I see it now. You can make doubles of yourself. No. That's, that's, that's Kate. That's duplicate. Yeah. I'm the pink one? Oh, right. Why is she not more popular than duplicate? Her powers are incredible. It's not going to be on you, man. Invincible. Oh. Oh, it's his moon it's friend. You. Oh, thank heavens. I, th I thought I was too late. I have to warn you. Earth is off limits. There's a Viltrumite living on your planet. Thanks for that. Thank you for telling us now. You just left? That's nuts, man. Yeah. Viltrumites don't leave. As we can tell, my dad is just gone. That is super weird for a Viltrumite. They don't just give up. Power of humanity. <laughs> the sounds of it, I'm the one who should be apologizing. If I'd checked my orders properly, I would have seen that Earth was flagged for Viltrumite takeover. Yeah, why don't you just warn all the planets that are with Viltrumites? The Coalition of Planets will want to hear about you. This could be huge, yeah. I don't get why you're smiling. Just... Thinking about everything I've been through, 
how huge it all feels. But the fact that it's just a small part of something much larger makes it all seem more it's perspective though manageable. once they find out your father took off the viltramites are gonna come for you right it doesn't have to be omni man necessarily what's the plan in the meantime <laughs> oh yeah this this thing that mark did by accident wait did he like make people in the core of the earth now it's allowing you yeah, this show built so many elements in just eight episodes. Yeah, this guy. It's the most powerful hero of all time, or villain of all time. And he says his new zombie army. Yeah, you got a job. See, he didn't need college after all. Shove it, professor. <laughs> Finish high school, I guess. Oh, Why all right, you? good. Okay, fine. I give up. What is high school? Now it's all out you. So that was an amazing, amazing finale to season one. There's just so many great things happening. First of all, just visually, it was beautiful. And it was so well conceived in terms of the, the action, the fight. It was extremely graphic, obviously, but I feel like at least to some degree it was it was earned. You know, like not all violence is earned in that way, but it had emotional weight behind it is what I'm saying. And overall, I think the reason why the action was so great in this episode is because it's backed by the emotion of it. The emotion of Mark losing his father. Omni-Man becoming unraveled and sort of revealing the fact that he, I think, in a very important sense, is the weak one. It's not humanity. It's it's Omni-Man. He's a man-child. His reasoning is so simplistic and, to me, seems to lack almost all perspective on like what life is and what humanity is. And it was the slightest inkling of that through Debbie that ended up driving him away. I gotta say that, you know, even with no knowledge of the comics, I'm really impressed with what season one managed to accomplish. It was eight episodes and there are long episodes, but it didn't feel rushed at all. There were a lot of slower scenes, really drawn out conversations. It took its time yet established so much of the world and like beyond the world and I guess the universe, the main characters, the side characters, and giving a fun take on superheroes while also being a parody of it, which is really welcome. In that way, it's very self-aware. And I think that the, the only ways it did fail are the ways where it was not self-aware. Like for example, with Amber. Amber started out as a really interesting character, someone I liked to see and listen to until she just fell into that, that trope, you know, the misunderstanding girlfriend trope, which was then made even worse by her having known about Mark, which I don't know, I don't really get it, but I definitely understand the buzz about the show. I've heard that it's been extended to other seasons, which is great. There are a lot of places it can go. The only thing I would worry about in future seasons is like, Omni-Man was such a key part of it. The psychic terror with his just incredible physical ability creates some real tension. So in his absence, I'm worried that subsequent seasons won't have the same stakes unless he comes back or the Viltrumites are involved somehow. But overall, it was a lot of fun. Thank you to everybody who recommended the show to me. I really enjoyed it. Thank you to all of you for watching. It's been a lot of fun and I'll see you guys for the next show, which I haven't fully decided on yet.